My next guest is an actress, a comedian, who may be best known for her role as Chloe O'Brien in the TV series 24, and Gail the Snail in It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, but she's here with a book entitled Famous coming out in May. Please welcome Marilyn Rice Cup. You're so good. I think I try. You're so I try. good. That's why you're the big money. You really are, because like right before we started, you 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 tested the waters. You said, "Are you are you tired of hearing about 24?" <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, "Ah, I'm good." And you're like, yeah. "All right." We have 24 fans also here in, of in, in, in the studio. Massive 24. Oh, fans. in the studio. Yes, I thought you meant in the world. In the like, world, all. But you're the funny. You are. A, an actor, you're a comedian, you are now an author, we're gonna talk about the I book, know. but when people come to you and they say, it's 2022, and they say, oh, Chloe, 24, do you like roll your eyes or do you embrace it? I, I definitely embrace it, it's a part of me, I'm proud of it, it was a huge chunk of my life, but now it's more, I get the children whose parents showed them 24. Uh, and that's... it's interesting, when you, know, when you have longevity in the business, as I do, Going through something like that and coming out the other side is mm. is fascinating. To be on something that was so powerful, so in the zeitgeist for so many years, um, you know, because it was like the first binged watch show, and it also had a lot of hot bus button issues and um, reflected what was happening in the world and was and a massive. It was huge. Was huge. It was and so I did huge. comedy before that. I right. only did comedy. And then for years and years was only known for that show. And so now it's interesting because I'm in a different place, you know. I, I, I was telling people it's like you just come because I actually followed your comedy before. You did? Yeah, 24. So yeah. Like, people are like, she's on 24. I didn't watch it at first. I'm like, oh, no, she's a comedian. And then I saw your role. I'm like, oh, she, everyone knows her as this, as a dramatic kind yes. of kick ass. And at the time when I started 24 years ago, I remember the executives are like, we didn't know if you could do drama. I mean, honestly, I didn't really know I could either. But so you fake it till you make it. You fake it till you make it. But yeah, very scary entering onto a hugely successful TV show and trying to fit into the tone and and not knowing. You know, when I first signed on, it was like for four episodes, and then nine years later, I'm a dramatic actress, <laughs> yeah. and then, you know, had a family, was married got divorced, still have a family, a fractured family. No, we're good. <laughs> Everything's working. My ex out. is with the cat and my and the dog and my son while I get to come on the road and promote the book. But yeah, I, I bring that up because during that time, you know, I was focused on the family. It was sort of post-24 and then had a bunch of live dates lined up when COVID started. Yeah. All that canceled and you know, as we all did, we adjusted and everyone has their own story of, of how they approached that time. I went inward, wrote a book, back in the stand-up, full force. Full force. That's yeah, what's so the, that's it, what's interesting to see. It's like you've come full circle and now people are in a way rediscovering you yes. as Mary Lynn, the comedian, but they're saying, Wait, she's a dramatic actress. What is she doing it was doing comedy? And with the rest of us are like, no, 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 this is her roots. It is wild. It's wild. And my son is 13, and I mean, in some ways he needs me more than ever, but it's not, we're not in that baby period. I'm not at the you know, I'm 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 at a different place in my life. And, and even as a 13-year-old, he has his own autonomy, right? He, yeah. It's like mom, just leave me alone exactly. for a second. Exactly. Go do comedy. Exactly. Don't hug me. Go talk about me on stage. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you, you talk about how we adjusted during this pandemic. This is the first time that South by Southwest Studio is live in three years. Oh, my God. Yeah, you can feel the energy here. Yeah. People are excited. But, yeah, Just I was wondering, how, have you been doing this with the festival for a long time? They invited me three years ago for the first time. And, and my wife, who's a doctor and I married up, she's like, there's going to be no festival. And I'm like, no, no, I'm leaving next week. She goes, oh. they're going to cancel it. She called it a month before. She says, America's not prepared. They're going to cancel everything. Watch. Go ahead. Be excited about this. It's going to get canceled. And I remember I, I, I called uh, Jenny Dubes, our producer. I'm like, my wife is saying, if I go to South by Southwest, she's going to divorce me. And I can't make it. And she was heartbroken. She goes, okay, I'll try to find someone else. I'll try to find Franz to do it, the guy you just met. That would have been horrible if Franz was the host. <laughs> and then a day later, a day after don't that. Don't bring me yeah, into yeah. it. I don't know what's this going on here space. in the studio. This is a safe space. <laughs> he's but, right there. Yeah, no, I, he, he's, he takes the abuse. But a day after that phone call, South by Southwest canceled. Yeah, she knew. Yeah, and, and, She and, just and, took a hard line with you. She was like, really? She, You're she's not like, going to listen kids. to me? Yeah. No. But that's what happened. And then they had to pivot. And South by coming back 
is, you know, all of us being together. It's huge. It's yeah. huge. You could feel it. But I remember the, that. That was like a real turning point when South by was canceled. It was like, oh, the, reverb, the reverberations were, it was like, oh, this is real. This like, is real. It just got real. Yeah, shit. If Austin is canceling That's right. South by. That's right. This pandemic is here to stay. Yeah. And you pivoted with the comedy special. I love how you did the comedy special. Thank you. Because you did your research. I did my research and I saw it. It's... I'm like, oh, she did it from her garage, haha. <laughs> no, she, you did it from your garage. She did it from my garage. It's real. I literally, you see it, and you're like, oh, that the backdrop well, is her garage door. Okay, so I was working on stand up. I was prepared to be doing more stand up. Pandemic hits, we start doing all these Zoom shows, and I was headlining. That was this is the weirdest. I mean, it's weird enough to go do a five minute set on Zoom, you know, alone, Strange. looking at your screen. But then I did a headline. I did some headlining shows, which is like an hour for an audience on Zoom, and that's uh, my friend who was helping me, producing with me, helping me with the writing stuff. You know, my my sounding board. Thank God, um, you can't do it alone, as Baron said in his interview. See callbacks to things yes, people haven't look seen yet. But um, she said, "Why don't we? Why don't you do this and let's just." tape it. And so we were just two person show, you know, literally how to light a garage properly. It was camera was set up. Well, it was like a medium right? shot. So at first we tried to do it as if, or no, what we tried to do was film the zoom show. And we were very quickly was like the eye lines off. Cause you're, you're doing the zoom show. The sound is kind of wonky. So we redid as if I was doing a zoom show, but for, you know, the audience of no one in my garage, lit the garage with some LED lights. Yes, very nice. It was good the lighting. The audience, you know, what I could hear heckling me was like my dog drinking from the toilet and the Amazon truck outside and the hum of the refrigerator. And oh, that's, I just that's... cuddled up in the warmth <laughs> of my own voice for the whole special. But, but, I, but I was very proud of myself. And I have a um, good friend of mine who, you know, didn't know what I was doing, but she knows me and she knows my material. She said, Oh, it really, it feels more like, you, it, you, it feels like you did a crossover That's of right. like a YouTube, the way people talk to the camera and it has that intimacy. So I adjusted my stand-up for what that format was. It was, it was stand-up comedy. It was stand-up comedy during a pandemic. It was intimate and in a strange way it became like a surreal performance art also. Did you really watch it? Yeah. You, oh my gosh, We, we did I the research you. here. We I do love actually. It here. Hans uh, does. Oh no, I'm sorry, Franz. Just kidding with him. <laughs> He's like, what did I do to deserve this? He does the research. We actually watch the stuff. We're I actual fans. I feel so warm and fuzzy on yeah, the inside. Was, Thank and, you. And we also did research about the book that's yes. coming out. Before we before we talk about in depth what's in the book, the title of the book is great. Famish. Yes. How would you define famish? You know, I am an international superstar. Let's not deny it. That's... I've had somebody say, great title, but you are famous. And yes, I am, everybody. You can stay on the camera. Yes, I am. I'm incredible. I'm multifaceted. You've seen me in all of your favorite movies and TV shows over the years. But what I realized is I don't feel that way. And also, it's about how you measure your success and right. the difference between what you're really doing inside in your soul and in your life and in your life versus what it looks like in any success that you have that you've had I mean a lot of it is humorous it's like I don't know how to use my cred I don't know how to name drop myself you know what I mean I don't know how to act like I'm this status I'm a girl from the midwest working class who was thrust into this world so it's sort and of and you're this a mom and you got a dog, you got to pay the bills. Yeah. A lot of times get, you, you live your own life in your own bubble, not realizing the world sees you as Chloe. Yeah, 24. and you know, I love getting glammed up. I, I, I went through that with 24 where I, I got, you know, put onto the red carpet. I got, I got helped out by some lovely publicists who are like, this is how you wear a dress. I've this also how seen you, you on the this fashion you... walk. You've done the fashion walk. Right, and I, and I love that, and that's real, and I can do that, but at the end of the day, I'm just like, you know, I do so many like social media posts where I'm like taking out the trash, like pretty glamorous, you know, and I love that mixture between like the high and low and what really is a me measure of success and what what it looks like, I mean, all that stuff is exciting and I love it. And it was definitely an adjustment, but you can't be on a number one show forever, you know? No. 
and you have to and eat I'll what admit, like, I don't think I had a big ego, but I do think I got to a point where I was like, oh, this, I'm at this level, and it just continues from here. But not it necessarily. No, it does not. You have to eat what you hunt all the time as and, a creator. And you know, there was a period in my life where I was like, oh, it's award season. This is what I do now. Well, yeah, <laughs> it is when you're on a show that people care about, you know? Or the year we were winning yeah. was like the greatest time ever. Like, let's say 24 wins a Golden Globe. Oh, we're all on stage. Everybody's talking to us. It's a party. Well, the next time I got invited, but they're like, no plus one. You sit up on the balcony. The more important people sit down there. I was like, if you're not winning, it, they start hedging back. You have a choice between salad or bread. Choose one. Choose one. Choose wisely. <laughs> and everyone's like looking around at each other and, and trying to get in there. And it really. Um, it's humbling. It's humbling. Yeah. And then as, I, I love that world. I love them both. But it's like the humor in, in the difference between them and what's really going on and how to like stay connected to what's what's true you know you know I thought you and I'm shocked I thought the role that would really launch you the superstar f uh, f uh, famedom that you mentioned in the book is your portrayal uh, as the Oompa Loompa in the <laughs> community theater production of Willy Wonka Ooh, that where was did good. you where did you go wrong in that performance because you were so close to stardom I panicked on stage uh, uh, I panicked I tripped over my words I didn't I loomed when I should have oomped <laughs> and that was it. And that was the that was a sliding door moment. Yeah. You could have really taken off. Yeah. It was a lot of oomped. work to get back there. When when you look back in life, do you regret doing Orange Face? I do. Yeah. It was a blunder and I You can I, apologize I wish, to the world. If I you wish want, you right? wouldn't have brought it up. <laughs> I'm sorry, I went in Orange Face. It was wrong. But your intention was pure. You wanted to, you, you committed Time's to. I'm changed. Yeah, you yeah. were committed to the no, role. No, at the time, nobody batted an eye. It wasn't the orange face. It was my, you know. The fact that looping. you loomed a little yeah. too much in the oomph. I loomed too much. The but orange you, face, everyone was like, cool. Like, That's fine. Yeah. But why'd you, why'd you loom <laughs> here? And you're like, I'm sorry. It's a different Forgive time. me. Uh, but <laughs> you've had these roots. And, you know, when, he, when I saw the title, the full title of Famish is My Life at the Edge of Stardom. My first response was, gosh, she's so self-deprecating. What do you mean at the edge of stardom? She's 24, comedy. Mm. She's worked with the best, Odenkirk. She's got a book out. Yeah. She's done voice acting. She's not at the edge of stardom. You can't stop her. Yeah. She talks about herself in the third person. Yeah, that's, that's Hulk mode. She's, yeah. she's earned the third person Hulk. Yes. But like, for the rest of us looking, looking outside, it's like, man, if Mary Lynn feels like she's the edge of stardom, what about the rest of us? That's it. That's what it's all about. In some, in some ways, I do it to a detriment. I've, I have to, I'm still trying to pump myself up. You're a queen. You're a princess. Let's go. But like when I first started doing <clears throat> stand-up again and I was on 24, mm. I realized that the audience was so excited and saw me as a celebrity, but my comedy comes from a place of real self-deprecating. You know, and you're Midwestern. A, that's like, yeah. It's like you're rooted in it. You can't promote yourself as Irish, Midwestern. Catholic, no, no, Midwestern. No. Guilt, suffering, it. you're okay. Forget it. Yeah. Try, your hip, try your to get a job. Would be, yeah, your hip-hop track to get would be like, by. I'm okay. I'm kind of good. But, you know, I was an artist despite myself. Right. So uh, that's what I'm gonna. That's what it's always been about. Is like this self exploration. Oh, but I was saying when I took the stage, and I felt like because my comedy comes from hi guys, you know. I, <laughs> I'm here. I took a nap and I woke up and I was in Pottery Barn. You know, it's like this like whack. Which happens out. to the best of us. Thank you. And so I like mining that stuff. But what they were seeing is like, it was com it was a disconnect. The di They're like, what's wrong that. with her? She's she's a big star. And so. And, and also the disconnect was um, and, and at the start of your the, the comedy, uh, special that you did during the pandemic, the disconnect, in, in addition to that, which I noticed, you said it right off the bat, was for y'all who come here for Chloe in 24. Yeah. Yeah. This is the real Mary Lynn. Yes. And not so much anymore, but when I first started back into stand-up, I mean, I had a guy in the front row who, was, who had bought the sweater I wore on the show online. Not and creepy. was like... I don't, I don't know how to address that. I can't. I'm just trying to, trying to tell my jokes and stories. You know. Is there part of you that's? I don't know how to. I don't know how to be that for you. Mm. Oh, you got this sweater that was on my <laughs> body. Excellent. I, 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 I. 
Was there a part of you that's, that says, please don't be a killer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> please, please be kind. Kind of. Just be a nice dork. And, and by and large, you know, super fans are the best, and that's what you want. That's a dream come true. But, but yeah, it's, it, it's finding that balance between the real and the imagined. That's the weird part, right? Mm. Because, like, ha being called by your character name is like, wow, that's so cool, you know? I've had that experience of, uh, what was it? What's his name? Brian Cranston. I'm like, that's Walter White. And I'm like, oh, that's how people feel when they see me because oh. they love the show so much. Yeah. I know that feeling and it's, it's amazing. That means you did something good, you know, that they're identifying with you. But then on the other hand, I got to do what I got to do, you know? And you're going to hear some stuff you might not want to hear <laughs> in my stand -up. Just let me tell you. <laughs> Times have been rough. <laughs> You're gonna hear some stuff. <laughs> you think like Chloe... I said, if you wanna only, you might wanna just go rewatch the DVDs if you don't wanna get into some stuff when you come to my show. But it's it's a choice to to lean in and we'll, we'll Brene Brown the shit out of this interview to lean in with that vulnerability. I, that's my favorite. There's no other point to doing it unless you can do that. And my intersection is 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 comedy. You know that's who I identify with the sarcastic, the attitude. It's mm. like, for me, it's ultimately trying to break through that and be truthful. But that's my intersection. Like, even with, like, actors, if you're too earnest, like, I can't. There has to be, like, some humor and some edge, and so. That's how you, that's how you navigate this time. Yeah. I mean, specific, specifically this time, it's a pandemic. We're still going through it. And, and you've gone through stuff personally in the last couple of years. Uh, was humor for you what, what maybe just gave you some levity instead of the tears that was needed Absolutely. just to survive. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I try to, I'm, I'm probably lean more towards tears, so that's why I, and also more towards receptivity. So stand up for me is, teaches me how to be aggressive and take, a, take an approach, because I don't want to make people sad. I want to make them happy, but I definitely have that soft core. <laughs> <laughs> but in the book, Fame-ish, it's, it's, okay, I'm dealing with this stuff. I'm dealing with this career, which is volatile. Yes. I'm dealing with expectations and yes, failures. Yes, that's I've, right. I've dealt with success. I like you. I should be your publicist. I've dealt with success, and I'm at this position now. I like where your I, angle. I like the where, way you talk about stuff. Where I feel like I'm not, I'm, I, I might not be good enough. But, but let me use humor here to talk through the pain and acknowledge the pain, but also see what the, the stuff where we can laugh Right, and the thing of like me. the expectation and the I'm not good enough, you realize that that's false anyway. And so- I'm glad you realized that. If you go too far into that, you're not gonna be happy anyway, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Like? You're like, eh. But uh, you know, there, there is something here about the, the fact that you always prove yourself and sometimes it's not enough. And I'll give you, and I'll give you an example from the book where like Judd Apatow loves me. Yeah. Judd Apatow, why aren't you casting me? I've known him for years. It was a running joke because all of my reps or any business person, when you're in that very preliminary stage, they would go, oh, and you can just, you know, get in a Judd Apatow movie. Like, I've auditioned for Judd. I know him. I've known him. It was just always a near miss with us for whatever reason. I don't know the reason. And I did get him to give me a quote from my book just making a joke about how you've never cast me. So I think he was like, I'll throw you a bone. I'll give you a quote for your book. What's the quote? But I love him. I love his work. I don't even remember the quote. It's on my book. He goes, not bad. He, just. Uh, did he? No, is that what he, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, is he that goes, what he said? I this book remember. would have been a bestseller if he had just oomped a yeah, little bit more. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I love him. I love his work. And I'm of his ilk. I think that's why his name would always come up. And we were, we came up in the same circle we just and I, I actually worked with him on Larry Sanders show when deep he, cut deep cut well, he was a writer he was a young writer on that show before he became Judd Apatow so that's that was the thing I'm like yes I know him I don't know it just for whatever reason it never but happened. I think it's good because you could laugh about it you're like oh he's never cast me but I think it's interesting for the outsiders to be like even in this ecosystem yes when you're friends and that's some people right. say you know the kids That's in the hall. Right. You know Judd Apatow. Right. Mary Lynn. You just pick up the phone. That's exactly right. It should be easy. That's so 
you're making a very good point, which is even with people that you know, you, you have to like let it go. I can't look at them and be like, mm, why didn't you cancel me? It's like, yeah, I mean, you could and become Gollum, but you, uh, you don't. know, I don't know if we'll ever talk about it. But when I see him and and touch base with him, it's great. I'm, I, I can't hold it against him. That's his process. That's his mm. work. You know. But yeah, it's hard. It's hard to not take it personal. You know, and you learn that lesson over and over again. And, and, and hum- Even in something that you're putting your per- you're being very personal, personal and vulnerable. That that's a that's a weird place to be too. And but you, you have to learn that as an actor. Now I'm going on like a little bit of a tangent. But no, you're not. You're- it's under the same umbrella. It's like you you have to learn how to take care of yourself, and not take for granted what you do. Because in some ways, with comedy and acting, you can be like, oh whatever. You're just you know in front of a camera talking. But when you know what you do, you can feel it after an audition. You're like, oh, I just put myself out there. I feel bad. And you have to like put yourself back together and take care of yourself and, and recognize that that's what you're doing. And you're doing it over and over again. So There's whatever your version of self-care is in whatever field that you do, you have to recognize what you're doing and, and how you're you know, spending your energy, how you're putting yourself out there and how you need to recover and take care of yourself it's important and And with the acting and the performing especially comedy it's like can't take it personally but you still have to be vulnerable otherwise they're not going to connect with you that's what i love about stand-up is like every time you got to jump off that cliff every time (laughs) and it's the tightrope every time every time and that's the and that's the thrill and that's also the the fear yeah that's why it's like nothing will replace in the room, you know? Oh, we come full circle back to yeah, South by that. Southwest, yeah. Uh, that, that was all you, by the way. That's why they pay you the big mm-hmm. money. Uh, with the final minute I have left, I could talk to you for another 30 minutes and probably can tolerate me for another 10, but with the final minute I have left, I, ha- I have to ask about the story. You got to make out with Tom Cruise for 45 yes. minutes. you're so good. Uh, how was it? It's a story in the book, pre-order my book, Famous. I just wanted to tease, tease it up. Pre-order my book, Famous, right now. It'll be out officially May 17th. You can buy it. And, and I did an audio book, too. But, yes, I tell the story about it didn't even make it in the movie. <clears throat> what movie was it? Magnolia. He, he plays a character in the movie, T.J. Mackey, who's um, uh, this, like, shyster who's... Uh, I couldn't a misogynist the, shyster. Yes, who is telling guys, here's how you win over women. So he's doing the speech, and he gives this example of, like, you're late. You show up to the woman's house. So he's telling them and he's imagining it. And then it would cut to what he's imagining is a date with me where he screws up. And here's how you like basically lie to her and like get in her pants anyway. So he shows up like crying with some story. And then we end up on the couch and he totally feels me up and makes out with me for like a day or two of shooting. Never made it in the movie. Could you believe? Yeah. <laughs> Can you believe? Paul Thomas Anderson, did I not make out well enough? <laughs> what was it about my failure? Should I have oomped more? Uh, but too you, much oomping. Too much oomping. Too hot. Too hot for the too, screen. Too, uh, you, you were so hot. That That's America right. in 1999 could not tolerate That's that, right. your heat. You uh, know, I think Paul Thomas Anderson, he, uh, he, he gets a lot going on in his movies. I don't think he can service <laughs> every single thing that happens. Yeah, he, he's, he's but, got a lot of characters, too. Uh, J- uh, Jen, uh, the dupe. I don't take it personally. She doesn't take it personally. You can still cast her, Paul. Uh, the dupester, my producer said, I have time for one more question, so I'm going to go there. I was talking to Paula Poundstone, comedy legend. Uh, and she was a pioneer in the, in, yes. in the 80s and 90s yes. when their woman comic was the big thing. And I asked her, this was just a couple of weeks ago, I said, in 2022, has it gotten better? And she was like, has it? I haven't seen it. Whoa. Your response. I've experienced that at this festival. There's, mm. I think both things are happening. I think there still is censorship, but then in other ways, we're in a better place. There's more women than ever. Um, there we are seeing things that we need to be see, seeing on the road to equality. You know, stuff is being talked about. Stuff is being recognized have being met, as messed up as it was in the past. Definitely, I think we've made great strides. We just have to keep moving forward, right? Yeah, it's the only way. That's the no only way. No one's going way. back. I do think it is. It is an interesting time for comedy. It's. It's not what it used to be but i'm i'm erring on the side of it's better i think you just got to be true to yourself and find your own voice and and trust Um, but it's 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 hard It, it can be very polarizing especially 
on Twitter, you know, where things do get very black and white um, or things get out of context because stuff happens, especially in comedy at a live show. It gets nasty. Mm. And that's what, what we crave. We want it to get messy and nasty. We want to let loose. We want to cross boundaries in that room, but we don't, it doesn't necessarily hold up, you know, with the times. It, well, not with the times, but in the, in, if you take it and put it in a conversation that it wasn't meant to be yeah. in, and then it gets like talked about and reprinted and kind of far away from what the actual thing was in the room, that's when it gets hard. I think that's like what we're suffering from, right? Is yeah. like- Lack of context. Lack of context, because we're global, but then we're suffering from be being global because stuff happens in our little communities that we, that we need to be accountable before, for and be good people. We can't always be accountable for the global. Because I think when, once you get into that realm, it's like, yeah, there's good and there's evil. And I don't want to be on the side of evil. And we have to go towards what we have to go in the right direction. But that doesn't mean there's going to be some funky stuff that happens on the way there. But as we go towards the right direction, the thing that people can do is buy your book. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> You're the best. You like that transition? <laughs> An uh, amazing transition. When can they buy it? Uh, you can pre-order it right now and, you know, keep me, keep me in business. Get me, get me some good numbers. Pre-order Famish, the book. You can Google it. And it comes out May 17th. And where, where, when can people see you live? I am touring so much. Go on my Instagram. Which is? Maryland Rice Cub. You can go to MarylandMaryland.com. You can find my schedule anywhere. Click on it. I am going to be on the road for the next like eight months. Maryland, thank find you. your city. And find then, your city. And yeah. then everyone's going to go. You're not in my city. I'm only one person. <laughs> I'm trying. And if you bring uh, any uh, memorabilia from 24, just smile a lot. Smile a lot and don't terrify you. Don't terrify me. Thank you for I usually hu I usually end up hugging the people You're a hugger. that You're are from the super Midwest. fans. It is a little bit scary, but usually super fans are the best. Thank you they for joining They tend to us. not be killers. Thank let, let, let's err on that side. Most, <laughs> most people are not killers, okay? This is and a safe the space. world, we're going in the right direction, everybody. <laughs> Bye, my book. <laughs> Thank you, Marilyn, for joining us. Thank you so much to Jen and my team and Franz and everyone else. I was just kidding. You can watch all of our student interviews on the South by Southwest TV app, available on Apple TV, Roku, Android TV, and Amazon Fire. These interviews are also available on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash SXSW. And for a complete list of our interview schedule, check out SXSW.com slash studio. I'm Mujat Lee. Thanks for watching. Thank you.